Hey guys, Annalie here and welcome to my DIY channel. Today's video is going to be super fun because I am a special guest host in the What Month Is It Challenge hosted by Tammy from Happiness Created. The rules for this challenge are that you have to create at least one project that represents the month. And so September is my birth month and so I knew my birthstone was sapphire, was, is sapphire. But I really wanted to do something and branch out just a little bit more and find something that matched my decor. So I googled it and found out that the tree is the apple tree and i thought how fun would this be to do an apple themed video because it'll also work for fall so this is the first project we're going to be making um i know that i give you the inspiration but i saw this at target in the target dollar spot and i know it was only a dollar but i wanted to challenge myself to create my own so using one of these little signs that you can pick up from the dollar tree i just took off the front of the the piece of paper i guess i should say and then sanded it down painted it with white chalk paint and then on my cricut i went ahead and i just designed this this is just um the i just I, you know, I'll, I'll look up the fonts that i used for this but i just found an apple and then put these fonts on there and then i transferred this with my vinyl so i love to make stencils with my vinyl i know that there is actually such thing as stencil vinyl i have not tried it yet but i want to but i uh cut this out as a stencil and i i love using them and i'll tell you why a trick that I learned that I know so many of you do, but I first saw this from Whiskey and Wit, is that she seals her stencil, stencil down with some Mod Podge before she uses it. And then once that's dry, then she paints it. This actually has helped a ton with bleeding. I've actually never used it before I saw that, and now I use it all the time and I love it. But I love that I can use two different colors here. You can see that I did the homemade and the little apple stem green and then the first word apple is green and then I did the other word for cider and then the apple the same color in this like I, I mixed it together it was like red orange and white I just kind of made like a as close to the color that I could see from the inspiration picture basically and so once I let that dry I peeled that off and it came off really well and then I loved how in the inspiration picture it was trimmed with um, a line of the darker color so I just used some painters tape to give me a really straight line in these areas right here so on all four sides that gave me I mean I really probably could have drawn or painted this on but I don't always trust my hand and so you can even use your Cricut to cut something out like this but this was just quick and easy to use the painters tape and then I traced this out. So I took a piece of painter's tape, I drew on the shape that I needed, and then I cut it out with a little X-Acto knife. And then I put this down on all of the corners and it gave me that quick little shot there of the um, corners right there. But that is how this turned out. I love that it was a little bit bigger. I love that it challenged myself. And really the inspiration piece just gave me an idea of what to go off. And I'm so glad that I did because I, I love this cute little theme of apples. I haven't used a lot of apples in my home decor, so I'm really excited to incorporate them this fall. This is the next inspiration picture. This was also at the Target dollar spot. So again, apples again, but I like that it had the apple cider component. Okay, I lied. I like that because the last one was apple cider too. I like that it was just a little bit different. This one actually had the word seven cents a gallon on it. So right here, I'm using one of these um, signs from the Dollar Tree. So it looks like we've got a mason jar and our mason jar is going to advertise our apple cider for us. So I went ahead and kind of broke it down, sanded off the paper and the glitter. Actually, nope, I don't think I did. I think I just used the back side where the sticker was and then just left the glitter on the other side. Again, with my Cricut, I just kind of cut this out on my own. So my fonts are a little bit different. And this one's a little bit different from the inspiration piece because the apple cider, they're all in one line versus on top of each other. But it's okay because like I said, again, I just use it for inspiration to do what I actually really liked. So using the vinyl again for a stencil and then um, sealing it down with Mod, Mod Podge and letting that dry. I went ahead and painted this and I was able to paint it in the colors that I wanted it to be painted so that I didn't have to just do one solid color with vinyl. Now I know that you can do multiple colors with vinyl. I don't mind that method at all either. I just really like the idea of how quick and easy it is to use a stencil and just do different colors of paint. So right here you can see that we broke everything down, took everything off, and then this turned out, I think, so cute, you guys. I I have loved this. So I did 
um, do some footage of me actually tying on that bow. See, I did not sand the back off. But I did tie on a bow and I kind of distressed the edges just a little bit. I did not realize that my camera battery died and you guys, I get, I get carried away sometimes. I just start singing some songs and I don't realize that my battery dies and I just keep going and then I look up into my camera and I'm like, what? Where's my footage? But here is my piece versus the inspiration piece and um, I just, I love it. I think that this is such a fun piece to add and I can change it out or add it to all my other Apple decor. fall decor and I thought it would go really well with all of the apples so using these cute black signs that you can get from the Dollar Tree I um, I used four of them because the full length once you cut off the little pumpkin part there's that little pumpkin hole cut out at the top once you cut them down I didn't feel like I had enough room so I actually cut down another one into thirds and then made it kind of a, a ship lappy type feel even though it's a chalkboard um, I, I actually liked all the lines through it, but you also can just get a piece of foam core board that is black or just a piece of thin wood um, and paint it all black. And I actually might think I may might make a few variations of this, I'm not quite sure. But I went ahead and I glued it all together with the popsicle sticks and hot glue on the back. And then right here, just from my husband's scrap wood pile, I went ahead and I used my um, table saw to cut down a few strips of wood for me to use for a frame. You do not need to do this. You guys can use whatever you want for frames. You can use paint sticks. You can use furring strips from Home Depot. You can use the um, wooden square dowels that you can get. Those actually work great for frames. This was just quick and easy for me because I have the, the tools to do so. And then I went ahead and I just used my stapler gun to staple this into a frame right here. And then I am staining this because I love the contrast of the brown stain against the black looking kind of like a back chalkboard like backing. So I am staining this in the color Provincial by Minwax and it is a color of stain that I really love. Jacobian's probably my favorite but to change it up a little bit it's just a little bit of a lighter brown. And so um Again, Provincial is the name. I'll have that link down below. But using my Cricut again, I just went ahead and I cut out the words that I, I made from following the sign. I just kind of found the fonts that uh, looked like they matched the most to the picture, the inspiration picture. And so I actually don't have a uh, smart Cricut machine, but I did this with just my longer mat by using two sheets of 12 by 12 vinyl. That works really good. I just put it together on my 24 by 12 inch mat. And then of course there's the break in the middle, but I just line it up in the middle and it, I just put the words back together. And again, we're using this as a stencil. So it's easier to do if you're using it as a stencil to break it up in the middle and it works out really good. I just lined it all up. And I did use um, my ruler to kind of measure where the middle of the sign is so that I knew exactly where I wanted it to be. So I went ahead and got this all transferred and then we are gonna be sealing this with Mod Podge. And then once that's dry, we are going to paint it with some white chalk paint because I want it to look like white chalk on a black chalkboard. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about today's challenge that I am participating in. There is a playlist link down below. Tammy invited me to be a special guest host and she let me pick the month that was available, which was September. And this challenge was so much fun. So if you guys would like to participate next month, please do so. There's a playlist down below that we'll have linked. The co-hosts this month are Shawnee with Glitzy Stitches DIY and Ellie with DIY from House to Home. And then, of course, the special guest host is yours truly. But this is a really fun fun challenge you guys and please be sure you go and check out all of these hosts tammy is such a good host she's been keeping us in the loop all year and um like i said she asked me to do this i think at the beginning of the year and asked me to pick a month and i chose september and it was such a fun challenge to do because i learned a lot about my birth month i really only knew about my birthstone and now i know um, a lot more about my birth month and i love that i can incorporate I can incorporate some of my decor into my home based off of my birth month. So thank you so much, Tammy, for hosting this challenge and for inviting me to be a special guest host. Okay, so you can see that we have done those steps. We have sealed and painted, and now I am just removing the vinyl right here to expose our project. Um, and then 
I also cut out a pumpkin, a cute little pumpkin decal to go up right there, and I put that on after everything else was done so that I could see that I had it centered right in my sign where I wanted it to go. So I had also cut this out too, and we're gonna do the same process that we have been doing with everything else so far. We're just gonna seal it, paint it, peel it up, and then we are going to put on the frame. Here is the final product and I absolutely love how this turned out you guys this was so easy to make because I really just used the decal from Cricut Design Space and then I just used the words and found similar fonts to my liking and then I stapled the frame on to the the back of the sign basically or the front of the sign I stapled the sign on the back and that was it for this cute little project. I love that I can make these cute signs because these can actually be pretty pricey this sign the total cost was under ten dollars for me and so i love that it was so affordable they really can run quite expensive so this was a very fun easy diy that saved me a lot of money next up is using this little plaque that i got from the dollar tree i just sanded off the front and now we are painting it with some waverly chalk paint in the color moss I'm actually going to be using the same decal that I used earlier with an apple cider, um, the, what, the project at the very beginning. I wanted to have a smaller one to put on a tiered tray because that first sign isn't small enough for that and so I thought it'd be cute to add this to like tiered tray. And that's what's so fun about creating your own decals or just using decals in general is that you can use them in multiple projects and just change them to different sizes. So again, we're going to be doing the same process, the whole theme for the, this video. Um, transferred this on, sealed this down with some Mod Podge, and then just sponging this on in different colors. A little tip for you guys, I use the sponges that you can get from the Dollar Tree in a pack of like, I can't remember how many there are, there's like eight maybe, and they're just the dishwashing sponges. It's the whole pack is $1.25, and I just cut them up into little cubes, and then I use those to pounce on my paint anytime I use a stencil, and then I can just throw them away. It's a cheap alternative to paint brushes or the, even the foam brushes because you get more they go a lot farther I don't really use them for a lot of painting but I use them for staining and for pouncing on with stencils and you guys it works great I get a lot of mileage out of that so if uh, you guys needed a little tip there for some stenciling and whatnot you can get those sponges from the Dollar Tree they work wonderful Once I was done peeling off all of the vinyl, I went ahead and I gave the edges a little bit more distressing and then I sealed this down with some Mod Podge and then this cute little project was done, is done. And I have it on my tiered tray and I love how it just adds so much into the fall decor on my tiered tray. This right here is probably the easiest DIY if you can even call it that. I found these cute wooden apples from the Dollar Tree, both, both packs. We're going to come to those other ones in a minute. But these are just cute little wooden apples, and so I just painted these. I painted six of them and stained two of them. I've actually, you've already seen them in the decor that I have 
shown with my past projects but you guys i loved these i was so excited when i found these in fact this was the only package that was there or else i would have bought them all but if you guys have found these let me know these cute little apples you can put them in a little basket you can put them on a tiered tray you can just put them next to your decor i love them and it was perfect because i actually picked them up before i even knew that i was going to be doing a full apple video for fall so win-win Okay, and then these other little apples that you're, you can see those cute little um, wood cutouts. I'll be staining those in just a minute. Here's the two apples that I also stained. And I am still using the color Provincial by Minwax. And so I stained those two little apples to give it some diversity. And then these came for, with eight in a pack. And so when I saw these, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them because I felt like they would make the cutest garland. I love watching people make garlands. I just think that you can do so much with them and they elevate any decorated space. So with these, I decided to make a little spin off of a family tree idea because apples, apples are on a tree. See what I did there? And so um, I went ahead and I just cut out right here. Our last name is Ashby. And so I just cut out the cute little sign or the cute little decal. It says Ashby family tree. And then I did all of our names. So we have four kids. There's six of us total in our family. And so where there were eight apples, it worked out perfectly because we're starting off with Ashby family tree. And then I'm going to put our names on six of them. And then the very last one is going to be established in 2008, which is the year that my husband and I got married. So I just cut these out in some white matte vinyl and transferred these on. This went really fast. The font, I believe, was... I'll have to go back and look. Uh, I'll see if I can see what that was and put that in the description box down below. Sometimes I get going so fast that I don't even pay attention. I pick a font and I'm like, that looks nice. And then I move on and never come back to it. It's terrible. Terrible, you guys. So once I got these all on and transferred, there's there's the part where I said to established 2008. <clears throat> I went ahead and I gave these some distressing and then I also protected them with some Mod Podge. Um, then we are going to be using some beads that I got from Walmart around Christmas time. And I'm gonna tie this onto some jute twine with some ribbon to break it up and I'll do some tassels. I'm actually gonna let you guys just watch that process play out because I don't have a filmed portion of me for the end segment, but I do have an end segment for you guys. For any of, the, any of you who are still here, um, sorry that you have to listen to the end segment if that's something that you typically click away from, but I just didn't have time to film myself to tell you the end segment. Um, but I wanna share with you a video that I um, found by Brene Brown. I've actually shared her here before on my channel before. If you guys know who she is and if you guys have seen any of her videos, leave a comment down below or an emoji or whatever because I love a lot of her messages. Um, one of her favorite messages that she does is assume that people are doing the best they can. That was in another end segment that I did and I will see if I can have that video available for you in the iCard. But I found another one that really helped me when it talks about placing blame. She goes into, it's like a three minute video, which I'll have linked down below. And she goes into detail about how we are oftentimes very quick to place blame on things that actually really are nobody's fault or it's something that we do. She gives an example about how she was trying to drink a cup of coffee one morning and she had white pants on and she accidentally dropped the cup of coffee. It shattered and it spilled coffee all over her white pants. And the first thing she thought was, dang you, Steve, which is her husband. And she immediately blamed it on her husband, Steve, because he had gone out the night before. She had asked him to not come home late because when he comes home late, she doesn't sleep well. And so she wanted to go to sleep. So he didn't come home on time. He was a little bit late. Therefore, she went to bed late. She was tired. And so she chalked up her clumsiness to being tired because her husband was late. And then she goes on to talk about how we go through that chain of events so quickly in our minds that immediately we're blaming somebody else for an accident or misfortune. And she talks about how by, by being aware of that, we can take responsibility for our own thoughts and actions and things that we don't need to blame other people for. Because what that created was later her husband, Steve, called and said, hey, how are you? And she was like, fine. And she was upset with him and he didn't even know that he had done anything wrong or he really hadn't done anything wrong and it affected her relationship and so they ended up 
he just was like, okay, fine. I don't, you're in a bad mood. I don't want to deal with you. And so these things can really affect um, our relationships and people around us. And so it was an interesting thought because I have caught myself now doing that several times towards my own husband. And sometimes I'll be hostile towards him for whatever reason and he'll have no idea. And then he just retaliates and then we're hostile and we just um, have a, a discussion or an argument or sometimes we don't talk at all. And so it was just really interesting that um, the awareness, if when these things are pointed out, it can bring a lot of self-awareness. And so watch that video down below and then let me know what you guys think about it. Um, I know this could probably be a little bit of a controversial topic, but I always love the opportunity to try to become something more. A lot of people have a to-do list and not all of us or many of us or any of us have a to-be list. And that's something that I definitely want to work on for myself because then I can hopefully have more meaningful relationships with my family members, my husband, my kids, my coworkers. And so it was just a really great concept to, to learn and see. But let me know what you guys think about that video down below. And thank you so much for basically staying here for the end segment. Um, this is the completed project hanging up right here. I love how this turned out, you guys. Those beads were already pre-painted beads from Walmart around Christmas time, and the colors just work out perfectly for really year-round farmhouse, fall. It worked out great. I just did three beads in between each one and then used the ribbon to kind of tie it off and keep it in place. But that is it for this video, you guys. Please be sure to check out everything down below and leave me a comment. Like this video if you would. It always helps us YouTubers out. And if you liked any of this and would like to consider subscribing, I would love for you to stick around. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in our next video. Bye guys.